Hi, welcome to How to Repair. A friend of mine the other day was off to Screwfix to replace his Titan hammer drill which had failed, and I managed to convince him to let me have a look at it before he went splashing out 80 to 90 pounds replacing it, and his argument was, they're cheap enough, I'm just going to buy a new one. But I tried to explain to him that some of the faults on these drills are so simple and so cheap to repair, it is worth having a look at. Not just to save him a few quid, but to actually save all these electrical goods from going on the landfills. There is too much consumption going on in the world and manufacturers are just trying to get us to buy more and more when some of the items that we have are perfectly good to repair. Obsolescence is a real problem in society today. Governments are ignoring and letting manufacturers get away with just selling us new washing machines, new tumble dryers, cordless drills where battery banks have failed, and sometimes it is worth just spending 10 minutes to have a look at the item to work out whether it is economic for you to repair it or if you have to replace it. Okay, in this video I'm not only going to be replacing the component that has failed, but I'm also going to be showing you how to diagnose the problem. And believed or not, one of the most common problem with corded tools or garden equipment is the cabling system. Metal fatigue can take place at the plug where it's been pulled too often and misused, or it can happen at the drill end. You can even get broken wires inside because people have misused the drill by dropping it on the floor or not looking after it properly. Now, I'm going to show you how to diagnose the problem with this. Now, I've actually already diagnosed it, but I'm going to go through the procedure of diagnosing it. Believe it or not, what is wrong with this drill is a simple on-off switch, which is the trigger mechanism. And this was obtained on eBay, I think, for about £18 and this makes it affordable and economic to repair. Okay, the fault with this drill is you plug it in, power supply on, pressing the trigger, it's dead as a doornail. This means either we have no power going to the actual motor on the drill, or we possibly have a fault with a component within the drill. Now, of course, UK plugs are fused, meaning that you are able to check the fuse, and we'll be doing that in a second. But the first thing we want to do is actually take the drill apart. Now, I can see that there's one bolt here, Going on the other side, we have multiple screws going around here and also multiple screws at the base. And I will quickly dismantle this and I'll show you where the screws are. These are all Phillips. They will vary from different manufacturers of drill. Some use Torx. Some use uh, plain screws or sometimes torque security screws as well. But most of them are available. We have one torque 30 in here, which I'm quickly just going to undo. And this is one that has a nut on the other side. Do keep an eye on all the screws to make sure that they're the same length. If they're not the same length, do take note of where they come from. Now, we can remove the base. This is where the carbon brushes are on this motor. Some of the more modern drills will use brushless motors. And sometimes you will need to use a flat blade screwdriver and just carefully go round prizing everything to separate the two halves of the actual handle trigger, trigger mechanism. And there's a rubber guard on this to keep the dust out, which I need to peel back. And because this is been together for quite a while sometimes they are quite tricky to get off but there we go now in here if i hold this up to the camera for you the motor armature and the carbon brushes and i can see clearly in there that the carbon brushes are quite long this normally indicates that they're in good condition and the armature itself is nice and shiny with no score marks on. This normally indicates that the motor side is good. 
we have the variable spin here and we also have the trigger mechanism with some type of electrical filter or suppressor going across here to stop electrical interference. Now the first thing we need to do is check the wiring going through and this comes through the handle here all the way to the trigger mechanism and what we need to do here is just undo the plug this will expose the positive and negative. This is an unearthed appliance, meaning it doesn't use an earth because it's a plastic casing. And we need to check the continuity now going through the wire through to the two terminals on the switch. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is turn the multimeter to continuity and you can see the screen there. And we're going to check across the fuse. The fuse is good. And now we need to check the live wire and the neutral wire going through to the actual switch here. Now I'm going to lift the switch out and I'm actually going to undo the two cables. So the neutral is on the top side and the positive or live wire is on the other side. I'm going to bring these over and I'll use my crocodile clip on this very useful to have and I'm going to connect that to the neutral and I'm going to check the actual continuity going through there. Now if you have an intermittent fault it's worth moving the cable at this point here to see if there's any breakage or at this point here to see if there's any breakage in the circuit because sometimes the actual copper inside the wire can fail internally. It looks good but that doesn't necessarily mean it is good. Now we'll do the same on the other side. And this is the positive or live wire. And we will check here. And as you can see, we've got continuity testing the cable. You can actually see as I'm bending the cable, I did get a loose-ish connection then, but I think that was more my finger on the actual connection. And if I do the same on this side, we have continuity. This means that the cabling system running from the plug to the switch is actually good. The next thing we need to do is test the switch itself. And this can easily be done. And if I rotate this round for you, and I'm going to just use my two probes here. Now I have some connectors here on the back and we go across the switch on the neutral. As you can see on the multimeter there, we have no continuity on the neutral side. I'm going to try this on the live side. And that is what led me to the problem with this drill. This basically means that the switching system inside has failed. And if I get the new switch to show you, and I go across the live side, pressing the trigger, we can see that we have continuity. Going across the neutral side, again, we have continuity. Now what I'm quickly going to do now is just show you or to test the drill using a connector block. In other words, I'm going to join the neutral and the neutral out together. And I'm also going to use the live in and out. And this would allow me to use the switch on the wall as the on off switch. This should only ever be done by people who are competent with electrics, because as you can imagine, the whole thing is exposed here. But you might want to test this to make sure that it is in good condition apart from the switch. Now, the reason these switches fail is due to poor contacts. And when I say poor contacts, the cooker factory in Barcelona that I went around last year, we were able to use their laboratory to test individual contacts on selector switch, which is basically a set of points inside here that open and shut as the trigger is pressed. And these contacts can carbonize over a period of time, meaning as you are creating the electrical circuit, the switch shuts and as it shuts and opens, it can generate a spark if they are not using good quality components in the actual contacts. And these can actually arc and cause carbonization, which is basically the reason why this switch has failed. 
So I'm just connecting the alive and the neutral. These are two separate circuits. This is not one connector block. This is basically two connectors, but they are joined together. That is all done. Making sure that everything is safe. I will just put the top of the plug back on. Turning the switch off, plugging it in. And this way I have guaranteed that the switch is the part that has failed. So at this point you would be good to order a switch because you know the drill is in good condition. You would have also noticed when I actually turned it on that there was no sparking coming from around the armature. This is because the carbon brushes are in good condition. Now I've done other videos showing you how to replace carbon brushes before so I'm not going to go into that. This video was basically about understanding how to diagnose the problem and how to actually work out whether it was affordable for you to actually order an 18 pound switch. This drill is going to be perfectly good once I've replaced this. So I'll quickly just undo these and replace it. Disconnecting the two neutrals. And also the two lives in and out. Putting the new switch in. Make sure you open up just making sure the cables can slide in that's on the top And our live one goes in the bottom. Make sure it is a good connection. And I'm also going to use a better screwdriver than that just to make sure that these are nicely nipped up. And now we can insert the switch, making sure not to trap any of the wiring. And also drop the filter or suppressor in. And now we can make sure that all our cabling is neat and tidy and does not get trapped anywhere. The rubber guard will put on in a minute. I always prefer doing these things up by hand. And dropping the rubber guard into the groove. Okay, we'll quickly just test the drill and we've got an ampage meter here as well so we can actually see how much power it draws. I've turned this on to the drill function, not the hammer, and This drill draws approximately 600 watts of power. It's a damn good drill. It's most probably actually built better 
than the newer ones today because going back three, four years ago when this was purchased, I imagine the build quality was slightly better. Some of the more modern drills do have brushless motors in, which are slightly better than the actual brush motors, but that is as technology evolves. Most importantly here, it was the ability to actually be able to repair something, diagnose the problem, and actually see if it was affordable to repair. Because on many occasions, if the motor had gone, I would actually say it is unrepairable due to the cost of the motor and the drill only costing £80. But when you consider a switch like this is only £18, that was well worth the effort of repairing. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm a big advocate to the Right to Repair Act, and I believe a lot of manufacturers, when it comes to tools, garden accessories, and our normal domestic appliances, are not being responsible enough with regards supplying us the information to be able to repair these uh, drills, washing machines, or any other appliance. Governments are seeming to encourage consumerism just to keep these false economies going. Washing machines, tumble dryers and cookers used to last 20 to 30 years. We are now throwing them away every five years because the manufacturers are deliberately building them so you have to replace them. And even little things like this drill are economic to repair if the part is only about £18. Thanks very much indeed for watching this video. I hope it helped you. Remember to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you can get all the parts through the links on this video, or you can visit the website with regards other information with regards appliances. Thanks very much indeed for watching.